Hi guys, welcome back. So this could be the last week that Diddy remains behind bars. Diddy lawyers are so desperate. They are working overtime. They even reference Donald Trump's federal criminal case and a letter to the judge set to rule on his bail request today. In the letter submitted Friday, they argued that Diddy's public statements, including on social media, are protected by the First Amendment and should be judged using the highest level of scrutiny, similar to the standard used in Trump's presidential immunity case. The court should apply Trump's heightened standard when evaluating Mr. Combs' speech, the lawyers wrote. They pointed out that in Trump versus United States, the Supreme Court ruled that restricting a defendant's speech is only justified by a significant and imminent threat to justice. Based on this, they claimed Diddy has an even stronger constitutional right to criticize and speak out against the prosecution than most defendants. The outgoing U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York warned a federal judge Monday to be aware of bail efforts for Sean Diddy Combs as the Bad Boy Records founder has an outgoing history of obstructive conduct and has physically abused his personal staff. Citing Diddy's decades-long pattern of violence, Damien Williams' office presented a vivid portrayal of Diddy to Judge Aaron Subramanian far more detailed than anything shared by a typically reserved U.S. attorney until now. Okay, so this is what he wrote to the judge. Over the years, the defendants... Physical and sexual abuse has taken many forms, often in the context of long-term romantic relationships. Throughout, there was a common theme. The defendant repeatedly and consistently forced and coerced women to satisfy his sexual desires, often behind closed doors. The defendant engaged in acts of violence against women, including throwing them to the ground, dragging them by the hair, kicking, shoving, punching, and slapping them. He manipulated, coerced, and extorted women, including by plying them with DRUGS, threatening to withhold financial support, and threatening to disseminate SEX tapes that the defendant had made of their sexual encounters. He intimidated women. He intimidated women, including by displaying firearms, threatening them, showing up at their house, at their homes, announced, and attempting to beat down the door on one occasion with a hammer. Beyond this, romantic partners, the defendant also physically abused his personal staff. Former staff members have described the defendant threatened to unalive them, throwing objects at them, and being struck, punched, and shoved by the defendant, and seeing him do the same to others. This significant history of violence must be taken into account when viewing the defendant's obstructive activity. Taken together, there can be no doubt that the government has proven the defendant's dangerousness by clear and convincing evidence. So Damian Williams, soon to be replaced by Donald Trump appointee Jay Clayton, largely avoided constitutional arguments and instead criticized the defense team led by Agnifilo and Goragos for failing Okay, for failing to provide proper safeguards and their latest request for bail for Diddy. The U.S. Attorney's Office also condemned the defense casual disregard for rules while requesting Diddy's release, stating this lack of seriousness gave them no confidence that the defense could control Diddy's behavior. 
They accused Diddy of using another inmate's account to contact family members from jail, despite promises to comply with rules. The prosecution further alleged that Diddy violated a previous agreement by contacting a grand jury witness, his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura, multiple times before and after her testimony lawsuit, and then deleting the messages from his phone. Cassie had previously sued him for abuse and all word in a case settled for $30 million in just 24 hours. Lastly, they accused Diddy of providing falsified documents to the court during a hearing about alleged government misconduct, undermining his claims, his claims that officials mishandled his legal materials during a raid on his cell. The feds added of Diddy's accusation that documents and notes labeled legal had been improperly taken and photographed by MSC staff during the raid on his cell and locker. It turned out a number of those pages did not actually have the term legal on them on the original documents. A fact that out and out pissed off the judge last week. Yeah, the judge was pissed. The judge was pissed on Friday, okay? Acknowledging the error, as it were, of papers not labeled legal and then suddenly labeled legal in the November 22nd hearing, the defendants was noticeably silent on the issue today, as well as over the more specific matters of obstruction raised by the government. However, in a second filing after court hours Monday today, the defendants did say Mr. Combs objects to the gov government submission to the extent it goes beyond responding to the court's specific question and request that the court not consider any new or repetitive information in the government's letter. So they're saying they plan to try again if the judge denied them bail again. Like, I don't get it. Why does he keep filing for bail? Can't they just put a block? I mean, this is his third bail. He's been denied twice. I mean, is this the norm? Can someone just keep filing for bail over and over and over after being denied over and over? There should be a limit. You know, after the first time, you got to wait six months. And if you are denied, you have to wait nine months. That, you know, like, ugh, I don't know. But there should be a limit. Anyway, Damian Williams, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, plans to resign from office in December before Donald Trump's inauguration. And he was nominated in 2021 by President Joe Biden, making Williams the first black American to lead the prosecutor's office and the youngest at age 41. He's only 41? The Southern District of New York has secured historic convictions, including the falling crypto king, Sam Bankman Fried. So Damian Williams is only stepping down. He's only resigning because Trump already named his pick for that position. Trump is going to clean house the first day in office. So everyone appointed by Biden, you know, will be replaced pretty much. So Damian Williams stepping down will not affect Diddy's trial in any way. All right. Um, so will Diddy get bail today? Well, not today. It's late now. Tomorrow or at least Wednesday, the latest. 
I don't know because when Diddy's lawyers told a judge, Diddy, you know, could, you know, if he gets bail, he'll be out in house arrest and, you know, Miami. And then the judge was like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 we're not doing that. So then that's when Diddy's lawyers said, okay, he'll be in house arrest in Manhattan, his apartment. You know, he got an apartment nearby. And that's when the judge was like, oh, okay, tell me more. The judge was more open to it once the lawyer said that he will remain in Manhattan and, you know, house arrest. So, I don't know. But because, you know, in, in Miami, that he has his, his boat, that he has his plane, you know. But here in Manhattan, where's he going to go? It's going to be a little bit harder, you know. So, I don't know. I feel like... The judge needs to really, really, really think about this and not be open to any bail. And he needs to put a a limit to how many times that he can request bail because this is too much. And I don't care about innocent until proven guilty. This man is a clear and present danger to society. The judge needs to keep him behind the cage. Yep, keep him locked behind a cage. He is where he belongs. All right? So that's all you guys. What are your thoughts? Do you think Diddy will get bail? Leave it in the comments. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.